Yeah, the purpose of this video is to familiarize yourself with the thermodynamic functions that are built into ease. There's a lot of data that is just in the background that, that you can look up properties, all sorts of properties, uh, to give you an appreciation of, of where those properties are and how many there are. We can go to the to the help index and look up the thermophysical functions. And you can see all of these are functions that are built into E. So if I need to know what the pressure is, then I use the pressure function. If I need to know the temperature, then I use the temperature function. The ones that we will use uh, most commonly in this course is going to be pressure, temperature, uh, volume, which uh, really is specific volume, uh, but the function is V-O-L-U-M-E, volume. Uh, pressure, temperature, uh, specific volume, internal energy, uh, we'll start learning about enthalpy as well, and then entropy uh, later on in, in the course. So those are the those are the main functions that you'll be using, uh, but you'll see there's a there's a number of additional functions, and these are all these are basically fluid properties. And I can go look and see what substances are built into ease, and there's a large number of those. We have a real fluid section, a mixture section. Um, and then down here there's an ideal gas and some brines. Uh, the ideal gas, you'll see that, uh, for instance, I have CO2 here, but I also, in the real fluid section, have carbon dioxide. And so if there's, a, if there's two versions of this, if you spell the substance name out, that is, ease, that is an indicator to ease that you're using the real fluid properties, not making any assumptions about it. If you use the chemical formula for some of these, then that's the indicator to ease that you want to use the ideal gas version of these properties. And that will be the first input into any of these functions. If you want to call out and find the density or pressure of, of something, the very first input needs to be the substance that you're working with, whether that's water or air or, or nitrogen or oxygen or helium, whatever. Uh, and then that's followed by two independent variables that you happen to know. And so I'll go into, well, I'll just say something about this function really quick too. Uh, there's going to be times in, in the course where we're, we have many states, and for every state we're trying to build this table up with entropy, enthalpy, internal energy, temperature, pressure, specific volume, and, and so on. Uh, and so you can copy and paste those for each new state, but this is this this function here is also quite useful uh, because what you do when you type call real thermo props, um, then it's going to give you all of those. It's going to give you temperature, pressure, specific volume, enthalpy, entropy, internal energy, and quality. It'll just spit those out for you, just in one line of code. So you'll notice here um, in this example, I'm using a refrigerant, and so that's when I, when I create a variable, I use a dollar sign after it, so I can use that again later. So I'm calling the fluid, this R134A, and the next two are variables that I have values for. And so you see a couple lines ahead of this, I specify the temperature, I specify the pressure, 25C, 100 kPa. And so with that information, I can look everything else up. I can find whatever other state variable, what other whatever other thermodynamic property that, that I want to because I know two of them that are independent of each other. And so this is, this is a, a convenient set of code to use um, and we, we'll also very commonly just use the, the functions themselves independently and, and get a feel for that as well. So let's use, um, let's use density as an, as an example here. Let's say I want to know uh, I want to know the density of water at atmospheric conditions. So I'll let my pressure equal one atmosphere, and I'm going to work in units of kPa most always. Um, and so I'll convert that from one atmosphere to, to a kilopascal. And my temperature, let's say that I'm at uh, 300K. And so when I look up the density, I want to first list the first input into that function is the substance name. I'm using water in this case. 
Um, and then I need to include the two independent state variables. So now as I as I click this, you're going to see that oh, the number's not quite what you would think it should be. So first of all, there's there's some unit problems here. Um, and so we can go in and check those units. The, the, the fact of the matter is I haven't given this density variable any units. So I'll come in here. The fundamental units in SI are going to be kilograms per meter cubed. And you still see there is a unit problem. And so if I, if I look at this, I can see that density expects a temperature input with units of C, but the units are K. So I input this as 300K. And so what, it, what it's using in its, this formulation is as if I had 300C, which is, which is a lot hotter than 300K. And so how do I fix that? I either convert this to C or, or more easily, I look at my unit system and I say, you know what, for the temperature in this example, I'm going to use units of Kelvin. And now when I do this, I see the density of water around 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, which is, which is what you expect for a, a liquid water at atmospheric conditions. Okay, so um, just another uh, point of emphasis there, that the unit problems are not something that, that you should just brush under the rug, so to speak. Uh, it could mean that your answer is very wrong. In this case, it was, it was orders of magnitude wrong. Okay, um, and so let's do another example where, um, and if I change this to helium, for instance, and so I'm spelling the word out, and at atmospheric conditions, my helium density is about 0.1625, so many orders of magnitude, about an order of magnitude lower than air, for example. Um, in fact, we could do air. And air is one, this might cause an error actually, nope. Um, so air is about 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed, so helium was about a tenth of that. Um, not quite a tenth, but. Um, and then if I want to do internal energy, the function that is int energy, and let's say I'm looking at pressure and temperature, but at this time, well, let's keep it with temperature. Okay, so there's my internal energy that has units of kilojoules per kilogram. So my unit problems go away. And now I've got three thermodynamic properties. Well, I technically have four with density. Um, but if I want to look up specific volume now, which should be the inverse of density, um, the function for that is volume. And in this case, I could use pressure and temperature, or I could use my specific volume. That is another state variable that is independent of pressure, and so I can use those two to get my uh, specific volume. Meters cubed per kilogram. Okay, well that concludes uh, this tutorial, and uh, hopefully you, you start to gain some comfort and, and familiarity with this, uh, using these, these functions. That's one of the biggest benefits of ease and one of the reasons why we're using it is so that we can take advantage of all the built-in data. Now if you want to, uh, you could create your own lookup table functions for different parameters. There's, there's data out there, so you could, you could do this in Python, for example. Um, so there's other reasons that we use ease, but, but this, is, this is one of the reasons it's already built in. We don't have to worry about creating our own lookup table. So, Alright, thank you.